Do you still cut and style other people's hair? What is the best and worst part about being an influencer? What are your go-to hair products right now? There's a few questions regarding engagements. Oh, this question. I can't answer this. Can you update us on your current shampoos and conditioners? If I'm still vegan. Now the last two questions are going to be some pretty big spoiler alerts. Today's date is June 14th, Wednesday, and now we are up. What's good everybody? To all my friends, old and new, I thought we could do a little life update today because, well, we haven't sat down in a while. I haven't stopped in a while. I've just been traveling for three weeks. I've got to do my hair. It's my first wash day. First wash day? I had a filling this morning, so I'm still a little numb on this side of my face. Excuse me, but it's my first wash day since being home. So I thought we could style together I'm gonna answer any questions that you have I put up a little box on my Instagram So if you're not following me there you should and we shall style together I'm gonna be doing a really affordable wash day today because why not? My sister Amanda actually arranged all of the questions, which I have not yet read, but we've got a bunch. So question number one, why did you want to become a hairstylist? What a fabulous question. I'm sure many of you can relate. It's very hard to find a hairstylist, someone that can actually understand your curls. And that fueled me to become a hairstylist because if no one else was gonna be able to understand, then I wanted to understand my hair better and to share that love with the class. I love helping people with curly hair and stylists better understand how to manage all of this. Now I am gonna go in with my first product. I said this was gonna be a very affordable wash day. So I'm going in with the Eva NYC. This is the Main Magic 10 in 1 Primer because it's gonna give me heat, UV protection, reduce frizz, add shine. It's got 10 in 1 benefits and it's super, super lightweight. This is actually the version for fine hair. So friendly for everybody. Next question, what are you most excited for? That's a tough question. If we're talking short term, I'm excited to go to Las Vegas. It's gonna be my first time there. I'm going with my sis there and I'm actually gonna be teaching a class there. So that'll be really cool. If you're gonna be in Vegas at the International Beauty Show, Hit me up. But otherwise, I'm really excited for my sister's wedding this year. I am her maid of honor, a role which I take very seriously. We have her bachelorette coming up, which I am ready to slay. And then her wedding is in the fall, which we are still working on her bridal trial. I think we're due for an updated video on that. Do you still cut and style other people's hair? I'd love to get a cut and style by you. I do. And one day I would love to get to you, but right now I'm not currently accepting new clients. Unfortunately, there's only one of me, but that is what fuels me to teach and educate more hairstylists. So that way I am able to refer you to someone else that I know I personally would trust, and so you can too. Oh, Tina, don't attack me. How is your diet and exercise journey going? Hmm. I will say that while I was in Europe over the past three weeks, my steps were averaging over 15K a day, and I hit 30,000 steps a day a couple times. Now that I'm back home, I am trying my best to keep up with that, but going for a walk at home is not the same as going in Europe, so I really have to force myself here. But I am feeling healthier, trying to get in more movement, also trying to lift some weights, taking some supplements, and I am not still vegan. This is a question I have not yet answered, but I'm currently pescatarian, vegetarian, slash prioritizing my health and getting in my protein as needed. So that means I need to have a little piece of chicken. I'm at the place where I'm gonna have a little piece of chicken if it is going to help me fuel my body. And I have not yet admitted that to all of you yet, which is, you know, it feels sad. I really wanted to continue my vegan journey. I really loved it. It just became very, very difficult. And I didn't feel like it was healthy for me because of what I was eating. I had to eat so many carbs, a lot of beans. I felt very, very inflamed. I felt like it was hard to get my protein in without eating some processed foods. And then it wasn't about health anymore. I felt like that was a more unhealthy route than eating whole foods and natural foods. But my diet is forever changed. I tried so many new things and I know that I can rely on a lot more veggies to get protein and nutrients as opposed to relying on meat like I used to. Honestly, I think it's a challenge everyone should try. What are your go-to hair products right now? Well, 
I've shared my go-to in several updated routine videos. It kind of got boring. I'm doing the same thing over and over. That's why today we are switching things up. I pulled out an oldie but a goodie. This is the Twist Weather Up Lotion. This is a curl cream that works pretty well in humidity. It's very moisturizing, but it's still lightweight. My hair is relatively fine. I've got a fine to medium texture. When we say texture, we mean the actual thickness, coarseness of our strands, not how much hair you have on your head. The amount of hair I have on my head is a medium to high density. So sometimes it looks like I have a lot of hair and, and I'm not saying I don't, but the hairs are skinny. They're skinny. Skinny. I lost my voice while traveling and she is still overseas. Okay. Bear with me. Would you move to any of the places you visited or are you glad to be home? To recap, I visited Milan, Italy, Florence, Italy, Brussels, Belgium, Rome, Italy, Barcelona, Spain, and Lisbon. Actually, not like we visited Lisbon, but we stayed in Cascais, Portugal. I hope I said that right. Cascais. 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 What a dream. So many of these countries impressed me, but honestly, I could always see myself settling down in Italy. <laughs> I just want to buy a summer home there. That would be the dream. Those are, those are my roots. It feels like home to me, and maybe one day you can catch me moving, but that is not today, unfortunately. Can you update us on your current shampoos and conditioners? Well, they're right there in my shower. I can definitely take you through. Um, when it comes to shampoos and conditioners, I'm picky. I'm a bit of a snob, because I feel like that's the product that you're putting on your scalp. And when it's going on your scalp, that's when we want to be a little bit more picky. So I've always loved and trusted Aveda. I have been absolutely in love with their new scalp, what's it called? Scalp, their scalp solutions. It's been wonderful. I also really like their Nutriplenish Deep Moisture Shampoo and Conditioner. I brought minis of those on vacation with me and I use those as my moisturizing shampoos slash to fulfill the need of a co-wash. Not that I need a co-wash. I don't think anyone really needs a co-wash, which AKA is a conditioner wash because it doesn't really wash otherwise. This is a moisturizing shampoo that does wash. So I love that, need that, love it, thrive it. That's my favorite moisturizing shampoo. Shampoo. And then I just really love the Olaplex 4C clarifying shampoo for scalp scrub. I really love Briogeo, their scalp revival. And if I want to maintain color, I have been liking the K18 maintenance shampoo. What else is in there? That's what I've been using. For budget option, I do think the Eva NYC Main Magic 10 in 1 uh, shampoo and conditioner. Those are good, especially like in the summertime if your hair's feeling extra dry. Keep a clarifying shampoo on hand, but those are nice, like gentle moisturizing shampoos and conditioners. That's what's currently in my rotation. As you can see, it's a lot. I always recommend everyone has at least two different shampoos on hand. That way you can alternate depending on what your hair and scalp is requiring that day. It's all about treating your hair intuitively. But yeah, that's currently what's in my shower. Do you feel that when it comes to curls, it's a continuous learning process? I feel like that applies to all hair textures. Our hair is constantly changing. Whether it's curly or straight, we are inevitably aging. Our hairs may eventually start graying. They get damaged one way or another, and our whole texture can also change depending on our hormones. You could be going through puberty, maybe a second puberty in your 20s. I feel like I did that. You may get pregnant and have a baby. You may be going through menopause. All of these different phases of life can have a drastic impact on our hair texture. And so there's always going to be learning curves. But what I will say is you know your hair better than anyone. And so trust your instincts. When you notice that there is a bit of a change, listen to your hair, see how it feels. And don't be afraid to adjust your hair routine. The products that may have worked for you a couple years ago may not work for you now, and that's okay. I'm actually gonna find out if that is also true for me. I don't think, I can't remember the last time I used these twist products, but I am gonna go in now with the Weather Up Gel. When this first came out, it was about two years ago, I was just, I was obsessed with it. You were sick of me with how much I was talking about this. I just think it's a fabulous gel that's super affordable and it's got great humidity fighting ingredients. So it's great for the summer. And look at it, it almost, it's almost like a cream, quite moisturizing. I think I have to stand up. I have to stand up so I can properly apply this. I, I went a little heavy handed there, but I'm gonna smooth this over my hair that I have already just defined. As you saw, I was brush styling, went over a couple pieces a few extra times only because we're chatting, I'm distracted. <sighs> 
question, this next question. I can't answer this. Which country slash place was your fave and where would you recommend to go? Okay, hold on. Let me just get this side here. Smoothing, smoothing. Really want to be thorough with gel because gel is going to act as your holding agent. This is going to hold everything, including little frizzies in place. I'm going to tuck them all, smooth them away. And now we're going to scrunch it in. When it comes to recommendations, and this even applies to hair care products, the answer requires a lot more nuance. I can't just say what I recommend without countering with the question of what do you like to see? What do you like to eat? How do you like to vacation? I think the most underrated place was Belgium. I don't think enough people are traveling to Belgium. I admittedly only went to Brussels to visit my friend that's there, but I am so glad that she got me out there. There's a lot to see, it's beautiful, a lot to party, and the waffles, the waffles and chocolate, absolutely worth it. But I also really loved Portugal. I understand why it's becoming a busier tourist attraction. Like I mentioned, we stayed in Cascais, which is like a little beach town. We stayed like down the street from where the president lives. Mr. President, it was super cute. A little touristy, like this is where a lot of European tourists go. But we were by the beach and I was very happy. We ended the trip there, which I thought was the perfect way to kind of relax and just take in all of the cities that I saw. And of course, I absolutely devoured as many pastel donatas as I could. I probably butchered the name. All I know is it's the little, the little custard tarts. Flaky, delicious, yellow. Just, I will say it with my whole chest, I think that's the best thing that Portugal has to offer. And that is, that is the highest compliment. Like, those are my freaking favorite. Truly my weakness. But I also really loved Milan. I think Milan had some of the most beautiful sights to see. It was perfect modern while also very historical, stunning city. Very fashionable. Then again, there was Rome. And also Barcelona. Don't, don't ask me to pick my favorite kid. Everything was amazing. Ooh, what trip have you taken? that you felt truly transformed you. I think my first trip to Europe last year when I first went to Italy, because it was right then and there when I decided I need to do this regularly. This felt right being there. What is the one home comfort you missed the most? I mean, automatically I was gonna say my sister. I missed my sister that was here. I left her all by herself. <laughs> I feel guilty every day. But besides that, um, I missed my skincare routine. If you know, you know that my entire skincare routine was left behind. I just went through security at the airport. She basically told me to have a seat. She said, where are you? I said, oh, we just got through security. Everything's fine. Okay, Mel, I am so sorry to tell you this, but your entire skincare bag was left here. I said, okay, that's okay. That's okay. We're at duty free. And so I just panic bought all kinds of very expensive products. I bought a bunch of Sashado products, which I know are very good products. But when I bought them, I was really panicking and I didn't even realize that these are not cruelty free. And one of the things that I really wanted to focus on this year is cruelty free products only. Because I think there's enough good beauty products out there that are cruelty free. And so there's no need to support a lot of these brands that are still testing on animals if they are. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not, quite entirely sure. I'm just trying my best. And even with, okay, there's there's more questions asking if I'm still vegan, I'm just trying my best. Prioritizing my health, still eating vegan when there are options, but if there are not options, if I am starving, if I am nutrient deprived, then I'm going to eat what I need to and or what I'd like to. On my travels, because I was visiting so many new countries, I really wanted to try new foods that I had never experienced before. I'm a huge foodie, so I think trying new foods is an experience and I did not want to hold back. How many hair tools did you take? Just my travel diffuser takes up a quarter of my luggage. Oh, okay, I have one of those silicone foldy travel diffusers, which I mean, I only had to use twice. It didn't fit on every blow dryer. I did try to bring a little travel blow dryer. I feel like I need more product here. I'm gonna apply some of the gel because this area of my hair can get the frizziest and if I want more control, I'm gonna brush through the gel. Also, like I mentioned, this stuff is almost like a cream. It's very moisturizing, very slippery. It's just a fabulous product. All right, so my travel diffuser is one of those little silicone folding ones, which absolutely sucks. I mean, it just doesn't fit on every single blow dryer. Thankfully, I only had to use it about twice. One of the Airbnbs I stayed at had the diffuser attachment for their blow dryer. My friend's place had a blow dryer with the matching diffuser. 
and then one day I actually air dried. But I was still happy to have it just in case. Otherwise, I was very minimal. I did two shampoos, three different conditioners, which I could have just done two, a little leave-in conditioner, a leave-in conditioner slash curl cream, a gel, hair oil, and texture spray. That was everything. Plus, I got to piggyback off of whatever products Lucas brought. The AG Curl Fresh Definer. And that product is such, has such a strong hold. It's literally, it's a cream, but it's a gel. And I used that to style on my very last day. And I think it gave me the best results. It gave me such strong hold with just a little bit of leave-in conditioner underneath. It was absolutely stunning. And it really simplifies things. And if we need to get more in depth about that, how to actually pack our curly hair products for traveling, let me know and we'll make it a video. What do you regret not taking on your trip? Besides my skincare, I do wish, oh, for makeup, I wish I brought better makeup. I wish I brought a powdered bronzer and a powdered blush and maybe even some more lipstick options. I had a big bag of makeup, but I don't feel like I had everything I needed. Yeah, maybe a little eyeshadow palette, an eyeliner, like I didn't, I didn't, I missed in the makeup department, but I felt like you're in Europe. It was hot. I was just gonna melt it all off. So I don't fully regret it, but it would have been nice to have, you know? Ooh, now we're reading into the future. Forget about the past, where I've been. Where will I go? Will future Mel go gray or color? As a hairstylist, I think I'm just gonna explore all of my options. I do definitely see myself embracing the gray eventually. And part of the reason why I am my natural dark color, plus some, you know, rich brown highlights, why I'm that right now is because I figured before I do reach that stage of life, I just wanna enjoy my natural root color. I'm sure I'll go through blonde when the grays are coming in. So that's when I'll go back to the iconic blonde that so many people recognize me as. But I think gray hair is so beautiful. I think I'll be able to pull it off. Only time will tell. What is the best and worst part about being an influencer? In my opinion, the worst part is all you see is what I'm putting out there, right? So what you see is not quite what's happening. The worst part for me is not feeling like I'm doing enough. Like I think I'm a pretty bad influencer when it comes to sharing things. I'm very much a later gram type of girl. So I don't really post things in the moment. I don't feel like I share enough like live updates. I don't like check in with you enough and I feel guilty about that. Like that makes me feel bad. But what makes me feel glad, what I think some of the best parts is, is that when I do put things out there, I get to share it with you, this wonderful community. And when you see me in the streets, I just, it means everything to me. I love seeing people in public. It does make me a little, you know, it makes me extra aware of my surroundings. Like I feel like I always have to be on when I most certainly am not. I have down days, but it's still really validating being out in public and getting to meet the community. I know that there are so many people that I have helped either help with their hair or even just put a smile on their face with my content. So these are just the little joys of being an influencer. Okay, how's my hair? I don't know. Again, you are my mirror. So let me know how are we looking. Let's do a little scrunch. I gotta tell you, this is just too much. Like, I really wish I had a better setup. Not that I'm complaining. I know I'm very blessed, but I, I, I feel like I'm really due for upgrading. So no, I am not still living with Amanda. She moved out and I think I think I need to soon as well. I've got a tips for filming and editing content for hair care brands, please share. I just feel like filming any kind of content, lighting is crucial. And I'm not telling you this, I'm even telling myself this, okay? Lighting is crucial. The quality of your content, we're talking like the camera, having a really clear picture so you can actually see the details in the hair and be really clear with your before and afters. These are all things that I need to remind myself to do. Oh my God. Do you want to grow your hair or do you like having short hair? I like having short hair, but I feel like I cut my hair and in two weeks it's grown out. I have very fast growing hair. I like it to be short and perky and like really just voluminous and round and my hair texture doesn't have those qualities, although I wish it did. So the shorter my hair, the more bounce and volume and shape I will have. But I think I do look good with longer hair or like a, like a mid-length hair. I think the next time I cut it, I'm just going to keep the length, but just adjust the shape. Let me know if I should bring back bangs or like a shag, like all the really short layers. I had that haircut for so long and it's fabulous, but I, don't, I actually don't know if I'm feeling that right now. I don't know, stay tuned. We're due for an updated DIY haircut. So I'll keep that in mind when I'm thinking about 
how I want to cut my hair next. It's a few questions regarding engagements and marriage, and I will say that this is the year for my C-stare. I am not engaged, not that I want to be right now. I mean, I could see it happening, but I'm not in a huge rush because when I get engaged, I wanna get engaged when I am ready to plan a wedding. I don't want a super long engagement. I don't even want a super massive wedding. I want a destination wedding. I'm good to elope almost. You know, just do something that feels really authentic to me. Yes, if we get married, I am loving the idea of a destination wedding since we do love traveling. Have you ever suffered with dandruff or have any tips? My best tip for you if you have dandruff is to wash your hair more often. Now, this becomes a concern if you are coloring your hair or if you have really dry hair, but you have to prioritize your scalp. Your scalp is where your hair grows. A healthy scalp will equal healthy hair. And there's ways to protect your ends from shampooing and water damage and things like that. Just make sure you're washing your hair more frequently if you have damage because it is going to thrive in an oilier or dirty hair state. So make sure your scalp is really nice and clean and make sure you know the difference between dandruff and a dry scalp because the treatment route that you take is going to be very, very different. But both of these result in flakes. If you need help with that, I have a whole playlist on scalp care or definitely consider seeing a trichologist. That is what I am currently in school slash online studying to be. A trichologist is a professional, a specialist in hair and scalp. But in order to diagnose, I would need to see your scalp. And when it comes to dandruff, the most important thing is keeping it at bay with, with perhaps a medicated shampoo and using these things regularly. Ooh, the rest of these questions are really good, but I feel like I should answer them after my hair is dried. So I'm gonna go diffuse and come back with the finished look. All right, I'm back in literally less than 10 minutes. I missed the shit out of my Dyson. Note to self, you cannot travel overseas with your uh, with your Dyson. There's no adapter powerful enough to be able to convert all the energy in this thing. <sighs> if I had this while traveling, everything just would have been so much faster. So anyways, this is my hair now dry. I forgot how well of a cast this creates. I consider this gel to be medium hold. It's not too soft that it just didn't work or too strong that it's extra extra crunchy so that it's almost hard to break out so i'm just going to very gently soften this cast and fluff my hair with nothing on my hands i'm a huge fan of hair oils and serums but a lot of the products i just used already have some hair oils and serums in them i will apply extra oil as needed but i want to first see how this feels and answer the next question which is regarding my refresh process. Now, I actually just created a video last week all about how to refresh hair. All the ways I like to revamp and revive my hair. And I have a full video on how I work out with my hair. So I do encourage you to check those out for details. But I am a very minimal gal. And I also don't sweat from my scalp. I was going to say I definitely sweat my upper lip right now. Okay, underarms, waterfalls, but my scalp doesn't sweat very much at all. So I feel very blessed. I do still have tips, I just can't get into it in this video, so I'll link a better resource below. Now, the last two questions are going to be some pretty big spoiler alerts. You're asking, what's on my vision board? What do I see for my career and life goals? And do I see myself opening up a salon? Honestly, I already feel like I'm living my life goals. Not that there's not room to grow, but what I'm doing here, educating, building a community, helping people, bettering their day, their hairs, their life, their, I don't know, their smiles. These are my career goals. And I really want to further this education to more stylists, like I was mentioning. So really embracing my inner educator. I feel like I obviously have some skills in educating people and helping them understand things in a simple way. I think that's how I've gotten here on YouTube today. So I think I'm really good at this and I want to keep doing it, God willing. And one day, eventually, I think opening up a school salon hybrid would be the absolute dream. But maybe after I, you know, live my life, go on Broadway or be in a movie, I am a theater kid, an actor at heart, and I really miss performing. So I think there's a need in my life that I have not been fulfilling and I kind of really want to get back on stage. As a child, winning an Oscar was a life goal of mine. So 
Maybe I'll still achieve that one day, but you'll have to stay tuned and bear with me. How is my hair looking? But the hair is so happy. I love this wash day. I, I don't know why I put it away for so long. This is a great product combo if your hair is very dry, but also if your hair is on the finer side because it truly is pretty lightweight. So I'm gonna say if you are fine, if you're color treated, especially if you are on the blonde side, this routine is fabulous because it's got great oils, proteins, it's moisturizing, it's protecting, it gives good hold. It survives really well in humidity and it is summertime now, finally. So on that note, I have a question for you, if I may. What do you wanna see? I feel like it's summertime, we kinda just wanna chill, we wanna lay back. It's like, who wants to be in school in the summertime, you know? So what do you wanna see these next few months? What are the best types of videos that I could create for you? Should I divert a little bit? Just create some really fun videos. Do you want some more reviews? Do you want some more makeup, lifestyle, fashion, a vlog or two, maybe some more hairstyles? I will put a poll in the community tab on my channel. You can see the community tab if you are subscribed. If you are not subscribed, well, I can't help you there, but I would really appreciate if you subscribed and I appreciate you so much for watching this video, for hanging out with me and for, you know, being so intrigued. Thank you for asking me such inquisitive questions. I hope that I provided some good insights for you or even just an escape from your life or maybe even inspired you to escape and travel a little bit. If you are traveling, let me know where you're going so I can add it to my list. And for now, I give you a big kiss. This has been your main girl Mel. And I think I am out. Peace. Pretty good wash day. Very good. Actually fucking slay of a wash day. This is phenomenal. Look, how, see how chunky the curls look? That's both my brush styling technique, but also these curls, these, these products did things for me. Your curls will look really stringy if they are, one, the products are not distributed very evenly, or duh, they are not moisturizing. If your hair is dry, it's gonna separate and frizz and look not as much like this. But I definitely feel like I need a shape. My, my hair has grown out very strange. Do I bring this up and just like embrace this like mid length and bring all these layers up? Do I bring back some bangs? I don't necessarily recommend bangs in the summertime because it's hot. Do you really want hair on your forehead? But also they're so cute. I don't know if I'm ready to go back. Like what is, no, what is that? I need to go before I start cutting. Okay, goodbye. It was too hot for a full shirt, okay?